Hello everyone, it's Scott, and we're back for day four of Dustmourne House of Horror spoiler season. We've got some interesting mythic and rare cards to talk about today, plus some other lower rarity cards that we'll talk about in terms of their potential standard playability, but also their limited playability. But before we dive into the day's spoilers, remember to like and subscribe to get further content like this throughout Dustmourne House of Horror spoiler season. Alright, let's dive into today's previews. So first we've got Funeral Room and Awakening Hall, which is one of our rooms for the set. And Funeral Room is two and a black mana, and you get an enchantment. And whenever a creature you control dies, each opponent loses a life and you gain a life. So a nice ability in black, a little bit overcosted potentially, but an ability that black decks have used in the past. But I think the winner here and why this is a mythic is awakening hall for six into black mana when you unlock this door return all creature cards from your graveyard to the battlefield so i think this works well in a mill style deck where you're milling lots of things into the graveyard and then in the late game you just unlock awakening hall and all of those now come back onto the battlefield so i think this is definitely standard playable in the right build of a graveyard strategy deck and possibly even in other decks that just want that surprise late game of having the ability to get to eight mana and then bring everything that their opponent killed back from the graveyard next we've got the roller crusher ride for x two and a red mana you get a legendary enchantment and when the roller Crusher Ride enters, it deals X damage to each of up to X targets. So whatever your X value is the number of targets plus the amount of damage that will be dealt to those creatures. And it also has Delirium. So if a source you control would deal non-combat damage to a permanent or player while there are four or more card types among cards in your graveyard, it deals double that damage instead. I think that's what's going to make this playable potentially in standard is that all that non-combat damage would then become damage that is going to be doubled when it happens and we already have seen in the um, Rakdos Lizard deck a lot of incidental damage that happens in that deck from the cards there and I think because of that that this potentially does have a place in standard but you're going to have to build the deck in such a way that you know that you're going to be able to get those four different card types among cards in, in your graveyard and if we can do that then I think this is definitely standard playable. Next we've got Marina Vendrell's Grimoire for five and a blue mana you get a legendary artifact and when marina vendrell's grimoire enters if you cast it you draw five cards you have no maximum hand size and don't lose the game for having zero or less life whenever you gain life draw that many cards whenever you lose life discard that many cards then if you have no cards in your hand you lose the game or Obviously, if you are milled out, that would cause you to lose the game as well. So I think this is a very interesting card, which really allows you to stay in the game for a very long time if you get it onto the field. Because if you're basically not creating life gain on your own and you're just using this as a mechanism for preventing your opponent from killing you. I think it's got some potential in standard. So we'll see how it, deck builders um, look at this, but I think really where this is definitely gonna see play is in Commander, where it's definitely designed for that kind of format. Next, we've got the Balustra Worm for three and two green mana. You get a worm that's a five five, and this spell can't be countered. It has Trample and Haste, and it also has Delirium for two and two green mana. Return Bolurstrad Worm from your graveyard to the battlefield with a finality counter on it. Activate only if there are four or more card types among cards in your graveyard and only as a sorcery. So this is definitely standard playable. Is it good enough in green decks to take the spots of other things? I'm not sure about that one. But the fact that it has that recursive nature that you can get it back late in the game from the graveyard for only four mana, I think 
it at least makes it something for deck builders to consider that are building green decks. Next, we've got Head Shredder for two and two green mana. You get an artifact that's a vehicle and is a 5-5. Five five. And whenever Head Shredder attacks, you may mill two cards. And whenever one or more land cards are put into your graveyard from your library, put them onto the battlefield tapped. And you can crew it for one. So this is a four mana, you know, crew it. And when it attacks, you get to mill two cards. And if you mill any lands, those are going to come right back to your um, to the battlefield under your control. So this is a way of ramping in the mid game. And I think that might be good enough for standard, particularly in decks that want to play a strategy where they're trying to get large sums of mana to do crazy big spells. And we know that there are definitely those currently in standard. Next, we've got a couple of additional rooms for the day. The first is Bottomless Pool and Locker Room. Bottomless Pool, one blue mana. So the cheapest we've seen for any of our room cards. And whenever you unlock this door, return up to one target creature to its owner's hand. So the, the same cost that we'd have for an unsummon in blue anyways, just at enchantment speed. And then locker room for four and a blue mana. Whenever one or more creatures you control deal combat damage to a player, you get to draw a card. So I think this is definitely um, one of the more playable ones in standard because you're going to be able to do bottomless pool most likely early in the game. And then in the mid game, when you've got a, a board presence, then you can unlock locker room and then get the extra cards for when your team is dealing combat damage to your opponent. Next, we've got Glassworks and Shre Shattered Yard. So Glassworks is two and a red mana. And when you unlock this door, this room deals four damage to target creature and opponent control. So a little bit high on the cost side there, but it is a common. So we tend to see those cost a little bit more than they should. And then we've got Shattered Yard for four and a red mana. At the beginning of your end step, this room deals one damage to each opponent. So kind of a, a perpetual damage to your opponent, one damage every single turn, so kind of pit chipping away at them. And because of that, I think this definitely is, is going to be playable in limited and might have some standard playability. Again, it's probably going to be built around a room deck if it's going to see play. Next, we've got a couple of interesting spells for the day, and the first is Untimely Malfunction for one and a red mana. You get an instant. You get to destroy a target artifact, change the target of target spell or ability with a single target, so that would allow you to, you know, if your opponent goes to destroy one of your creatures, we'll say a go for the throat, well now you can play this, and it would you can redirect that to a different creature, maybe one of theirs instead. And I think that's a really nice red ability because right now red doesn't really have a lot of defense mechanism in how red normally behaves. But being able to change the target, I think that might make this standard playable just on that function alone. And then one or two target creatures can't block this turn as your third option there. So I think all of those are very nice options for the card. And I think that second one is where we're going to find if this is going to be a standard playable card, that's where it's going to really earn its keep in standard. Next, next we've got threats around every corner for three and a green mana. You get an enchantment. And when threats around every corner enters, you manifest dread. And whenever a face down permanent you control enters, search your library for a basic land card, put it onto the battlefield tapped, then shuffle. And we know from Murders at Karloff Manor, we have a couple of mechanics there that would work well with this. So I think this has definitely got a chance to be relevant in standard um, because you play this on turn four and then after that you're playing things face down and you're ramping every time you do that. And I think the way standard is, is functioning right now, if, as long as you can remove things in the early game, I think this is a fine strategy in the mid to late game. Next, we've got Insidious Fungus for a green mana. You get a 
creature that's a fungus and is a 1-2. And for 2, you can sacrifice Insidious Fungus and you get to choose 1, destroy a target artifact, destroy a target enchantment, or draw a card. Then you may play a land card from your hand onto the battlefield tapped. So I really think this is a decent limited card. I think we can do this better in standard for a, really a lower cost because we've got things that you can do the first two abilities there for one or two mana just on their own and then on cards similar to this you know for one mana you can do that as well uh, you can destroy an enchantment or destroy an artifact so i think while it's an interesting card i don't think it's going to see a lot of standard play Next is Cursed Windbreaker for two and a blue mana. You get an artifact that's an equipment, and when, when Cursed Windbreaker enters, manifest dread, then attach Cursed Windbreaker to that creature. Equip creature has flying, and equipment cost is three. So nice spell here, and we've seen a couple of spells similar to this over the last few sets, where you play the card and then you get either cloak ability or something similar to that. And that's what we saw um, from Murders at Carleth Manor, another card. And that card has seen play, so I think this has got a chance to see some play too. Next, we've got Betraying Bargain. Not sure if that's going to be the actual name of the card because I've seen two, and this is a goldfish translation for us. But I think the text is right for us. So for one and a red mana, you get an instant. And as additional cost to cast the spell, sacrifice a creature, or enchantment or pay two and then bar betraying bargain deals five damage to target creature if that creature would die this turn exile it instead so a way to exile a shialdred get it out of the game entirely if you're playing a card like this but we already have uh, several spells that we know can cost as low as one mana to do the same thing in standard so i'm not sure if this sees much play outside of limited Next, we've got Cult Healer for two and a white mana. You get a Human Doctor. That's a 3-3 three, three with Eerie. And whenever an enchantment you control enters, and whenever you fully unlock a room, Cult Healer gains lifelink until end of turn. So I think in a limited, this is a fine card. Or if you're playing a room that's specifically playing a lot of enchantments or rooms, then I think this is a nice card in that because a 3-3 three, three with lifelink in white is a good deal for the most part in standard. Next we've got some of our survival cards for the day and the first is Savior of the Small for three and a white mana. You get a core survivor that's a three four and its survival ability says at the beginning of your second main phase if Savior of the Small is tapped return target creature card with mana value three or less from your graveyard to your hand. So basically a way to get cards that are have you've lost over the course of the game back into your hand and, and allow you to recast them so i think that in and of itself makes it potentially standard playable you know i wish this was three mana instead of four but the nice thing about this is you will be able to in combat have this survive most of the time so i think you're going to get that ability multiple times in standard or in limited i think this is a, a very powerful card to have there next we have cynical loner for one and a black mana you get a human survivor that's a three one and cynical loner cannot be blocked by glimmers and it has survival and at the beginning of your second main phase if cynical loner is tapped you may search your library for a card put it into your graveyard then shuffle so this is a way you know in a graveyard strategy you know it makes it to the you attack with it or you just tap it in another way and then on that second part you can actually go ahead and put something you want in your graveyard and then pull that out later with one of the um, re reanimation spells that we've got currently in standard so I think this has some standard playability in the right build of a reanimator style deck. Next we've got 
shrewd storyteller for one a green and a white mana you get a human survivor that's a three three and at the beginning of your second main phase if shrewd storyteller is tapped put a plus one plus one counter on target creature so i think for that reason you know this is definitely playable for three mana yeah you know, it's a fine card but if you're able to get that ability to you get a plus one plus one counter to a target creature turn after turn after turn because you're able to have him tapped at the beginning of your second main phase, then I think this is potentially a very powerful card in standard. Next, we've got some of our fears for the day, and the first is fear of imposters. For one and two blue mana, you get an enchantment creature. That's a nightmare and a three two with flash. And when fear of imposters enters, counter target spell, its controller manifests dread. So, you know, it's it's a counter spell on a body. And those are always quality cards in standard where you're doing this. I mean, we've seen Urtai over the last two years play a lot because it can do that. The downside is you are giving your opponent a 2-2 creature, but if you're countering some large spell that they're playing, you know, the downside of that really isn't that much. And then also then you get that creature on your side that you can then use to deal your opponent damage and hopefully win the game with. Next, we've got Fear of the Dark for four and a black mana. You get an enchantment creature. That's a nightmare and is a 5-5. Five, five. And whenever Fear of the Dark attacks, if defending player controls no glimmer creatures, it gains menace and death touch until end of turn. So for a common, definitely a very solid limited card and potentially has some playability in standard because it is a 5-5 five, five, and having menace and death touch are powerful abilities in standard and i think that even though it's a common you know there's an off chance that it could see some standard playability next we've got fear of infinity for a white a blue and a black mana you get an enchantment creature that's a nightmare and is a 2-2 two, two. It has flying and lifelink. So, yeah, I think, you know, for that combination of things, for three mana, that's a reasonable um, cost for it. Fear of Infinity cannot block, and it has Eerie. And whenever an enchantment you control enters the battlefield, and whenever you fully unlock a room, you may return Fear of Infinity from your graveyard to your hand. So, nice recursion ability with it as well, where if, if you lose it early in the game you play an enchantment later and then you get it back into your hand so i like that recursive nature of this card so i think this is definitely going to see some standard play and our, our last fear of the day is fear of burning alive for four and two red mana you get an enchantment creature that's a nightmare and a four four and when fear of burning alive enters it deals four damage to each opponent it has delirium, and whenever a source you control deals non-combat damage to an opponent, if there are four or more card types among cards in your graveyard, Fear of Burning Alive deals that amount of damage to target creature that player controls. So really interesting ability on Fear of Burning Alive, where when he comes in, you're going to deal four damage to your opponent, but if you have the delirium mechanic met, then anytime you're dealing direct damage to your opponent you are now dealing direct damage to some of their creatures as well and we know from what we've already talked about today there are things that can double those things we talked about the roller coaster um, so i think you know this is definitely a card i think has standard playability but it has to be in the right build and you've got to probably have it in some kind of ramp style deck so you're not waiting until turn six to get this all right, so, so we got some other lower rarity stuff I want to talk about as well. First is Trapped in the Screen for two a, and a white mana. You get an enchantment with Ward 2. And when Trapped in the Screen enters, exile target artifact creature or enchantment an opponent controls until Trapped in the Screen leaves the battlefield. So typical enchantment, three mana cost to exile something. The Ward cost here is the ward cost of two is nice on this card because it makes it a little bit harder for an opponent to get rid of it so it has definite limited playability and has an outside shot in standard next is stocked researcher for one and a blue mana you get a human wizard that's a three three and has defender it also has eerie and when an enchantment you control enters 
and whenever you fully unlock a room, Stocked Researcher can attack this turn as though it didn't have Defender. So again, a limited card um, and probably not standard playable. Next, we've got Vicious Clown for two and a red mana. You get a human clown. That's a 2-3. And whenever another creature you control with power two or less enters the battlefield, Vicious Clown gets plus two until end of turn. So, you know, it's a common, limited playable. Not going to see it in standard. Next, we've got Spine Seeker Centipede for two and a green mana. You get an insect. That's a 2-1. And when Spine Seeker Centipede enters, search your library for a basic land card, reveal it, put it in your hand, then shuffle. So this is two mana, or this is three mana for a two one creature and a land, which is a decent, you know, cost in limited or even in standard. And then it also has Delirium. And when Spine Seeker Centipede gets plus one plus two and has visions as long as there are four or more card types among cards in your graveyard so you can make it a three three for three mana if it meets the delirium requirement i think you know limited playable we're probably not going to see it in standard next we've got a couple of artifacts for the day and the first the first is attack in the box for three mana you get an artifact creature that's a toy and a two four and whatever attack in the box attacks, you may have it get plus four plus zero until end of turn. If you do, sacrifice it at the beginning of the next end step. So I don't see this as standard playable, but it might be playable as a so kind of that sneak, not necessarily sneak attack, but hey, your opponent's really low on life and you can give it that plus four if you're willing to sacrifice at the end of turn. And if you're going to be able to go ahead and kill your opponent, it's definitely worth that option. Next, we have Haunted Scream for three mana. You get an artifact and it taps for white or black mana. You can pay one life for green, blue, or red mana. And for seven mana, you can put seven plus one plus one counters on Haunted Screen, and it becomes a zero zero spirit creature in addition to its other types activate only once so you've got this you can spend seven mana on it to make it a seven seven so i think this is definitely limited playable something i would want in my limited deck but we can do better things in standard right now and our last card of the day is saw for two mana it's an artifact it's an equipment an equipped creature gets plus two plus zero and whenever equipped creature attacks, you may sacrifice a permanent other than that creature or saw. If you do, you get to draw a card and its equip cost is two. Again, I think this is a limited playable card and nothing beyond that. Right. Those are our day four spoilers for Dustmore and House of Horror. Hope you enjoyed the video. Remember to like and subscribe to get further content like this throughout Dustmore and House of Horror spoiler season. And I put up the day three videos that I did yesterday for you to look at as well, where I did one on the rares and mythics and another on the uncommons and commons. Thanks for staying to the end of the video and I will see you in the next one.